Look, we've all been there where we've been in a situation, we felt super nervous and anxious, not really because of the action necessarily that we're going to take, but just because of how we feel we're going to be judged by people around us. But the reality is, is no one really cares. Everyone is too focused on their own lives and solving their own problems. So I'm going to take the opportunity in this short video just to explain to you that people really aren't focusing or worrying about you cold approaching or working on your social skills as much as you think. And that is actually a really, really good thing. So my name is Dan, that dating anxiety guy. And for the last 16 years, I have worked behind the scenes with all of your top and favorite coaches, whether it be working with them on their businesses with their clients or for helping them grow their businesses on the YouTube platform. And in recent years, uh, or in the last recent year, I've decided to kind of move from the shadows or from behind the scenes to the front end so I can help you guys with your anxiety and your confidence in dating so you can get the same results, the same sort of stuff that I was doing with the dating coaches and their clients too. So if all of this does sound good, please like the video and of course subscribe to the channel. But going back to the main point at hand, that many guys, when they're going out to practice their cold approaching, they, I think they're, they're mostly scared because they feel like they're going to be judged by people around them. So I guess like imagine you're walking down Oxford Street, you've seen a really hot girl that you're attracted to, and you know you want to go and do it. But at the back of your mind, one of your limiting beliefs that you've got Yes might be, oh, I don't know how she's going to react or respond. And is it going to go well? Am I going to know what to say? But the big one that usually happens is the spotlight effect for guys. And they feel that people are going to watch them or that they're going to overhear what he's saying to the girl and they're going to get embarrassed or somehow someone's going to come in and ruin the situation. So first thing off the bat is there is absolutely no point trying to future predict something that you have absolutely no idea how is going to play out. You have to try and bring in a more stoic mentality into your way of thinking and just remember that you can only control the things that you have control over. And in this example, or the main thing really, would be how you react and your emotion and also for what you can say and how you think. But there's no point trying to think about, well, how is she going to react? Or how, more importantly, is the people around her going to react if I'm approaching? Or people around me, how are they going to react? Everyone is doing their own thing. Um, and I think this was like one of the very early realizations that I had. Uh, maybe not so much with me doing approaching, but certainly with filming all of the dating coaches in London, that they would be going off and doing the approaching and there would be me standing in like a certain position, either by the wall or in the middle of the street. And I think at first, when I first started, I was like, oh my God, people are going to be watching me film. And then that's going to draw attention to the situation of the dating coach and their interaction is going to go really, really badly. And, you know, you'd have this like sort of spiraling of, of thoughts, just sort of one thing leading to another and so on. But the reality was is people would glance at me filming and then they would just carry on with their lives or they would kind of like turn around and look like, like what's he filming at? And, and just carry on and not even think twice about it or not stand still and turn around and start like stroking their chin or beards and going like, what, what is going on here? Hmm. Hang on a minute, he's pointing the camera that way and it looks like those people are having an interaction. There was none of that. And, you know, in the 16 years, or in fact, no, that'd be a lie because I've been in the industry for 16 years, but filming in it, I've done it for 12. And I can honestly say in the 12 years of filming, like no one's really come over to me and gone like, what are you doing? Like, what are you filming? Or even in the tens of thousands of approaches that I've filmed and watched of coaches and even of their clients and even 
private clients that I've had as well, um, there's never really been any sort of circumstance where other people have interfered. And the only time I think I've ever seen someone externally interfere has not even been with anything to do with my clients or, or me whatsoever. It's where there's been maybe like some like argument or scuffle playing out on a street and that's usually been between like a guy and a girl and and you know and then people are observing because there's a lot of attention being drawn to that moment which is really where I'm kind of going with this is that when you're just living your life normally and you're not doing anything that's going to drastically cause you um much attention like it's not going to like draw in an audience then you would be amazed at really how invisible you are when you are walking around uh, on the streets of London or whatever city maybe that you are in in the world. And it's just a really good thing to remember that as long as you're not really drawing attention purposefully, you can go and do as you please. If you see someone that you're attracted to, you can go and talk to her and have that peace of mind in knowing that the most people might do is glance over and just sort of see what's going on for a split second before they go back to their autopilot lives and carry on doing things. You know, in fact, actually, that's probably something worth mentioning is that people are on autopilot. When they're leaving the house, they're thinking about what jobs they got to do, what's going on in their lives, their own personal problems of sorts. The last thing they're going to be focusing on is you. So when you're cold approaching someone, you also got to bear in mind that for them, for people who aren't really aware of the practicing of the skill of cold approaching, or even people who have no awareness of the dating industries or communities or how they actually work or run, that as far as anyone is concerned externally, between uh, outside of between you and the girl, they just think that you both know each other, that maybe you're like lifelong friends or maybe you are in a relationship with each other or, you know, or maybe your work colleagues, whatever. But that's usually what most people are thinking about. They're not thinking about like, oh, there's a guy going over to go and chat to that girl and give her a compliment and he's probably going to ask for the phone number. Oh, let's see how this plays out. You'll never see anything like that. It's usually only interesting for people if they're in very close proximity and they overhear the conversation. And I think really the only scenarios that you'll tend to have that sort of play out is usually in like a bar or a club where you can tell a guy is hitting on a girl or the girl's kind of playing the, you know that I know that you know that I know we want to have something happen here. So let's kind of play this flirtation game. And you kind of hear that play out and that's always really interesting. Or if people were talking about very... Uh, maybe taboo or unique topics of sorts, which I'm not even going to guess what they would be. But those are really going to be the only circumstances that people might sort of like pay attention and be very curious. So when you're practicing your cold approaching, honestly, remember that people are too busy worrying about their own lives and they just think that the people that you're speaking to, because the lightning is in that split second, you're never going to see these people walking by again, you know, there's always so much traffic in whatever city you go to or, or, or town, whatever. But you've got to bear in mind that you're never going to see these people again. And in that split second, they think you just know someone or you've seen someone that you know. And that's it. So remember that the next time you're going out to go and cold approach, just bear in mind that however much it might feel that everyone's watching you, they've got all eyes on you and the attention's on you. And you think that, oh, things are going to go badly and people are going to judge me and stuff. Just remember, people aren't. <laughs> their People are going to be focusing on their own lives. And you know what? If you actually do get guys that overhear you approaching women and giving compliments or trying to get a number, and actually this is something that I have seen, most of them usually give the nod of approval. They're like, fair play, mate. Well done for trying that because they just haven't had the balls to go and do it themselves. So very well, you're probably going to get more compliments and um, uh, appraisal yourself rather than people saying like, how dare you do that? Or why are you doing that? Or like, oh, this is going to go. I hope this goes wrong. You're not going to get any of that whatsoever. And if you find that you are getting those particular limiting beliefs, then 
And you're, and you're probably going to get that more, I would say, when you're on your own rather than with someone else. Then try and make sure that you are going out to practice cold approaching with someone who can support you. So whether it be a wing or a coach such as myself or another dating coach, that is really what's going to help override this sort of like, like, oh, I'm not sure sort of thing, because we're going to just sort of turn around and say, no, you're doing great. Well done for doing that. See, no one, no one criticized it. The only one who's going to criticize it is going to be me. I'm going to give you the feedback or you're going to walk away and I'm going to clap and be like, I'm so proud of you. And what that's going to do for you is that's just going to give you that positive reinforcement to say that this really wasn't that bad and everyone needs support once in a while, or just someone to say like, look, you're, you're overthinking stuff. Don't be silly. Get on, do it. And you'll get a, a really great result if you do. So I really hope this video was useful for you. Like I say, my name is Dan, that dating anxiety guy. If you found this really useful, please do like the video. And of course, if you subscribe as well, it really helps me to, uh, to grow my channel when I'm not mumbling and stumbling over my words. But it does mean though that I can try and reach even more guys to help them with their confidence with cold approaching and certainly to work on their anxieties or past traumas that they've had that's preventing them to move forward with their dating life and actually find themselves a partner and maybe more or maybe less. Maybe you want to have a bit of fun too. But either way, if you are struggling and you do need help, do check out my website and have a look at the coaching that I offer to help you with your approach anxiety. Um, other than that, I'd love to hear in the comments below your thoughts on this video and maybe other ideas of videos too. But just as the takeaway, just remember, like people are too busy to be focusing on their own lives than to be worrying about you. So people really do not give a toss about you when you're going out to practice cold approaching. And you know what? That really is okay.